Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and we're continuing our look into network attached storage devices. This time we're taking a look at the QNAP. This is the TS212P, and a viewer, Muon71, uh, wrote in and asked uh, if we could try this out. So I went out and bought one just for you, and uh, we're going to take a look at it and kind of put it through its paces. I would say this compares very much to uh, the Synology drive that we looked at last week, and that was the uh, Synology 214 SE. So this is very similar. It offers pretty much the same uh, feature set. It has a little bit more in the processing department. Uh, what I'll do, though, is really focus on this one compared to that one. And I'll say up front that uh, this is a very good uh, network attached storage device, but I do think that the Synology is a little bit better in that the operating system is more polished. But let's take a look though uh, at the hardware and you can see what uh, you get in the box. So this is the drive here. It's actually very lightweight um, and this particular model did not come with drives installed. So I had to uh, put some of my own in. So we're just going to pop the hood on it real quick. The nice thing is they don't, um, they give you the screws, but they don't have it screwed together when you get it, which is good for something like this. So uh, this is it here. I've actually loaded in two SSDs. I use these, um, these icy docks, which I really, really like. Uh, and I have these loaded in right now. Um, the first drive, and it's a little, it's not bad. I mean, this is something that you're going to do once and then have, not have to do again until you uh, get bigger drives. But the lower drive just kind of slides right into uh, a SATA connector at the bottom here. But uh, the top drive, you've got to run a little cable, and they give you the cables and everything. But again, just a little, a uh, little bit of extra work you got to do. So you just have to pop these cables in. The uh, power cord I found uh, needs to go in before the SATA cable does. So uh, you put all that in, and then you put uh, the drive back together, and you just load it up. And one, a couple other things to show you though on the hard drive before or on the on the out the exterior hardware before we uh, go into using it. Uh, is that it has uh, two USB 3.0 ports, which the uh, Synology does not have. The Synology just has a uh, USB 2.0 port on it. Uh, it has gigabit Ethernet, uh, of course, power. And then it's got something kind of neat, which I thought was unique, uh, is that it has a USB 2.0 port in the front, and then a button here that you can push and that'll copy files over or basically uh, initiate uh, some kind of file transfer that you want to do. And you have a couple different choices as to what you want this uh, particular USB port and the button to do. But it's kind of nice that you could run up to it uh, with a flash drive, uh, insert it, push the button, and copy some files over quickly. And they also offer a way to dismount it uh, just by holding the button down. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to look at that. Uh, we're going to look at some of the software features and see how they compare the, to the Synology and then do some benchmarks on the drive as well. So let's boot this up and see what it's all about. All right, we've got the drive booted up and it has a web-based control panel, much like the Synology. And like the Synology also, it has very similar names to the applications that, are, that come installed on it. And Muyan was wondering if these applications are free on the uh, QNAP, and they are. They've got a little app center that you can load up here to find other apps, so similar to the uh, App Store. And I found that most of these are free and you can, again, you know, install the, the Drupals and the Joomla's and the WordPresses and all the other uh, web-based applications. You do have a little bit more memory on uh, this device than you do on the uh, Synology, so you might be able to get uh, you know, maybe a little bit more use out of this, but this is certainly not going to be a high volume web server. This is a network attached storage device with only about half a gig of RAM. So, you know, there's, there's going to be a limit, but you could certainly use it to, you know, power some kind of intranet stuff or do some development work internally. Um, and then you can just kind of browse through here, see something you want to put on and install it. And they've got some uh, interesting stuff here, like here's something that'll let you uh, stream stuff to uh, AirPlay from the device, which is pretty cool. Um, so you have some options there. So maybe we'll just throw that one in there and install that. And you can see it just uh, goes out and pings the uh, QNAP server, finds that application and installs it on the drive. Now what's neat is, is that you can uh, drag files, let me zoom out here for a second, you can drag files off of this sidebar here, so we can maybe put the, well the control panel is already there, let's go put uh, users, uh, maybe we want to access users more frequently and you can kind of drop it on your home screen there, so uh, pretty nice, you know, I, I did find, and if you saw my review of the Synology, that I was really impressed with the Synology interface, I think if I had used this uh, before I tried the Synology, I would have been really impressed with it, except the fact that Synology's done, I think, a little bit of a better job uh, with their interface. But again, this is not bad. It's certainly uh, usable. So what I want to show you are a couple things. Uh, the first one's kind of fun. This is, uh, this is on their app store, and I don't think this is something that's too kosher, but uh, this is an actual um, HTML5 version of Super Mario Brothers that uh, is called Super Mario Brothers. I don't know if Nintendo would like this uh, to be offered even if it is free on a, on a company's app store but uh, complete with the music and everything else so you can play that if you want. Now one other thing you might notice is that there is a Plex server app and I downloaded that uh, and wanted to see how well it would work. Now it wasn't the fastest thing to install but 
uh, it is a full-blown Plex server. And what I did was I uh, installed uh, the server on the NAS drive. I copied over two files. I've got an MPEG-4 file and an MPEG-2 file that came off of my uh, Windows Media Center that I use as a DVR. So um, the big thing would be whether or not it can do the real-time encoding. So we're going to switch over to my desk camera here. We're going to select the show that I uh, recorded here, and we're going to just resume playing. And uh, sure enough, it has been transcoding effectively to my iPad and actually quite well. This is surprising. Now, I don't think you're going to be able to you know, do everything with this that you would on a PC as far as horsepower is concerned. This is a mobile processor with only about 512 megabytes of RAM. Uh, but the fact that it works at all is pretty amazing. Now, this file here, the second file, uh, is an MPEG-4 file that I just copied directly from my iPad to uh, the NAS drive, which is now running through its Plex server. So uh, surprisingly, this one doesn't always perform as well. But as you can see, that one works pretty good too. So, um, you know, it works. What can I say? I, you know, I wouldn't, you know, anticipate this running your whole uh, Plex infrastructure, um, but it is working as a Plex server and it is doing transcoding, surprisingly, uh, on the fly. So I am impressed. It has, you know, just like the uh, Synology drive and the WD MyCloud for that matter, um, there are a lot of, oops, I'm keep, I think I'm loading up a lot of applications here. Uh, there are a lot of uh, options for backing up. So you can use an rsync server, and this is really, you know, uh, nitty gritty Linux kind of stuff. So you may want to uh, do a little bit more research into how to set that up. But basically what you could do uh, is sync this directly up with a PC uh, or some other, some other device, even like a Raspberry Pi or something like that. Uh, to make sure that the files are synced up. There are you know, easier ways to do it as well, and we'll step through those in a minute. Uh, R2RR is some other thing that I have never tried before, so maybe somebody in the, in the, in the uh, comments section who's a little bit smarter at this stuff than I am can tell us about that. Uh, but you can enable Time Machine support, so just like all the other NAS drives we looked at, uh, by turning this on, all the Macs in your, uh, in your home office or home network will see the drive as a Time Machine source and be able to back up to it. So. Uh, you have some ability to uh, get that done as well. Um, you can also, just like the Synology, uh, back up to another uh, version of the QNAP NAS. So if anyone else is running or you have another one of these, you can just have them sync up together. Um, again, you have uh, some of these uh, rsync and rtrr remote options as well. It does offer cloud backup, so you can back up to Amazon S3, Elephant Drive, or Synform. Um, S3 is uh, the is the more expensive offering from Amazon. You saw in the Synology, we could have an option to back up to Glacier, which is very inexpensive to store data, a little bit more to pull the data out. Uh, but this one only supports S3 at the moment. But again, this is all software, so they could certainly uh, make that uh, happen later on. And of course, you can also set up a external hard drive option where you can dump uh, a portion of the drive to one external drive. You can actually um, keep a couple different external drives and back up different folders to each. So uh, you have that as an option. And I think you can schedule those as well. And then you've got what I find to be one of the unique features of this drive is that you have a uh, USB one-touch copy. Now, if you take a USB stick and just install it in the front port here, you got to wait just a second or two uh, for it to mount properly on the device. Uh, then what you do is hold down the button here for two seconds, and uh, it'll copy the contents of that USB device to your NAS device. And it actually works pretty decently. It's a little flaky, so you've got to just maybe double check before you uh, take everything out. Because you can see here it didn't, uh, looks like it didn't grab it that time. So let's just hold it down, 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, and see if it uh, copies at this time. So give it another second here. And we'll go back. And now you see we have a folder on that, uh, on that uh, uh, folder there, the download folder. It added another folder for, called 2014.419, which is today's date. And in there are all the files that were on that memory stick. So a pretty simple way to uh, you know, very quickly download files onto this. You can configure it a couple different ways. In fact, uh, there is a beta mode. There's a lot of beta modes on this, which you'll see when we get to the cloud syncing. Uh, but there is a beta mode where you could do a smart import, where if you just plug your camera in, it'll copy all the files off your camera without having to push the button at all. Uh, which is pretty cool. Now, one thing, though, is that you have to uh, pre-configure the backup method, and you have to do it with a disk in the drive, essentially. So uh, what I did is I had installed the drive, uh, the USB drive, into the NAS drive. 
uh, pointed it at front USB for the uh, source folder and then uh, pointed it at the download folder. And that means that anything that I plug into front USB is going to go to that download folder. Um, you could, I think you can configure it for the other USB ports as well. So uh, there are some options there. There's also a, a synchronization option uh, where you can basically sync uh, from the, the, uh, the NAS drive to the USB stick or vice versa. Now there are two options for syncing files to the cloud. You can either uh, sync to Amazon S3 or Elephant Drive or some other thing. Uh, and the way that works is that it's just real-time file replication. So if you change a file on here, it'll sync it up with the cloud. Uh, there is another option though, which is kind of a roll your own Dropbox, which I know a lot of you are interested in. And in fact, on the Synology, I think that was probably the, the, the single uh, most standout feature for me was how well that Dropbox-like functionality worked. Here, it's not as good, and I'll show you why. So when you load up the little app, you have, you know, you download your client and get everything set up. And what the client does is it kind of sits in the background, just like Dropbox, and it waits for a file to be changed. And when it's changed, whether it's on uh, the server, the, the, dr the drive here, or on your local file system, we'll make sure those sync up. So you could work it like Dropbox, and if you had a flight to go on, you could download a bunch of files, work on them. Then when you landed and got your internet back, uh, those files would sync back to the drive. Now, the problem is, is that they only let you use one folder on the disk, which is the QSync folder. So what happens is, is you set up the users here that can uh, access that. And then what will happen is, is you'll have a QSync folder that is separate from everything else. So you can't say, you know, maybe I wanted to sync up my multimedia folder or something like that. I can't do it. I can only sync the QSync folder. And of course, you can make different folders inside of this, but it kind of sits out separately. Now, the way it will work here is if I go into my, uh, my QSync folder on my local computer, so this is stored on my computer's hard drive, I can go in here and maybe I'm gonna change um, test two to test four, and we'll hit save, and we'll get out of that. And you can see it uh, changed on my other text editor here. Now, if I go uh, to the web-based version and click on the file, um, oops, it will show us that we have added, oops, it didn't sync yet. Sometimes it doesn't sync right away either, which has uh, been an issue. So I'm going to sync it with the NAS now and have it force it. Um, and hopefully, we go back, it will show us that, no, it still hasn't synced. So you can see it's, <laughs> it's still very beta. It was working before. Uh, you can change the file and it'll upload it. Now the problem is, is that uh, those QSync folders live in a different place than everything else that you have on the drive. So when you go to your local file system, for example, and you want to go browse that QSync folder on your network, you can't access the file. It'll actually say, hey, you, can, uh, you cannot access uh, your QSync folder from Samba, which is the Windows file sharing, FTP, or AFP, which is the Apple OS X file sharing. So if you want to access those files, that client has to be installed on every computer. Uh, or, of course, you could probably just log into the web interface, download the files, and re-upload them. But it's a bit cumbersome, and I think uh, it would have been a lot better if that folder could just sync up in real time like everything else. So uh, it's OK. It works. But uh, Synology's done a better job with their client. So now what we're going to do is load up the mobile apps and see what's available for that. So on mobile, they have actually some nice apps. And the first one we're going to take a look at is QManager, which is basically the administrative app. And it only is for iPhone, but of course, you can uh, shoehorn it onto your iPad. And what it's, what it's doing, it just gives you some basic information here about CPU usage, uh, RAM, and that sort of thing. And I don't know why my CPU is getting pegged as much as it is, but um, that is what it is. And you can kind of uh, disable and enable applications. I don't think this is available on, the similar app is not available on the Synology. So um, I do like what they've done with this. So I could, for example, disable the file station or the download station or any one of the apps. I can also turn them on, for example. So I can also, um, you know, some of the additional apps that I put in there, if I wanted to turn off that Super Mario Brothers thing, maybe it's just taken up too much uh, memory or something, I can uh, kill it. Uh, from, from the app and have it go goodbye. Um, you also have the ability to manage your backups. And I don't have anything configured currently, but uh, you could initiate backup jobs here. If you wanted to fire off a quick backup to your external drive, you could do that. So a uh, pretty handy little app. And uh, I like that they've given you some really good ways to kind of go through and edit users and uh, do that sort of thing. So that was nice that they have that app available. Um, there's also QFile. And what this is is a way uh, to just browse the, the contents of the drive while you're away from it or on your mobile device. So you can see here um, we can browse through some of our folders. I'm going to go to our download folder. Let's go to our QSync folder, actually. Uh, and there's that text file. This is my other account, but um, you have the ability to uh, look at those things. So, you know, you can pretty much access all the files. You can look at pictures and, you know, all the things that uh, you would expect you could do from a mobile app. You can do it. The app is very responsive and very fast, and I uh, do like the way that looks. You can also uh, upload files. So I can upload 
uh, from my photo library here. I just give it some access to that. And I could just take a picture here that I have on my um, thing and just uh, upload my daughter's picture there. And it'll fire that off to uh, the drive there. And it is there. And now we can browse it here. And I'm sure I could probably browse it from uh, the drive also. So a pretty nice little app. So that is the Q file. And then there's also Q mobile. And I'm not sure exactly what this one does that is different than the other one. I think they've um, kind of updated their apps over time and have done some other things. This is kind of like a media center. It's a, a little bit more of a iOS 7 kind of app, but it kind of, uh, you know, synchronizes all of your video and audio files so that you can uh, run them like a jukebox. And I think this also will allow you to toss stuff over to uh, AirPlay as well. So uh, that is the mobile apps. So what about performance? Well, as you can see, we're actually doing pretty good here. We've got about 65 megabytes per second in write performance and about 100 megabytes per second in read. Um, I do have solid state drives in here configured in RAID 0, so we're striping across the two drives. Uh, but given those speeds, I mean, they're good speeds, uh, but given those speeds, you're probably not going to benefit uh, from spending extra on uh, solid states and losing that amount of available space that you could get for the same money on a spinning drive. So I think if you get something like the WD Reds or maybe another 7200 RPM drive, you should probably see uh, similar speeds out of it. So uh, not too shabby. As you start doing things like any of these drives, you know, hitting it with the apps and some of the other stuff that you might do, uh, you'll see those speeds kind of decline. And one thing that I noticed while I was testing was that when the CPU was pegged, I couldn't get the CPU back down. Uh, so I had to reboot the drive and uh, get back to uh, better performance here. So uh, that is where we're at with uh, benchmarks. So overall, I think it's, you know, it's a good product. It's certainly not bad. Um, they're trying to do a lot. Uh, they're just not doing it as well as Synology is doing at the moment. I think over time, as they improve the software, we'll see more refinement and probably things working a little bit better. But you know, if I was to spend my money today, and I have, um, I would say the Synology for the money is the better price and the better product. Even the Synology, the, the one that we looked at, uh, which is slower in the processor department and slower in the memory department, uh, actually is better at the moment than this one is. So I think um, that's where it kind of falls. And we're seeing right now is that a lot of these network attached storage makers are trying to get into the consumer space and just piling on feature after feature uh, to make it attractive to home users. And um, everyone's taking a different approach to it. Everyone's got tiny little unique features, but I think of all of them out there right now, the Synology uh, is getting my mark of approval still. So if you have some other drives you want me to check out, uh, send me a note in the comments below and I will uh, do that for you. But in the meantime, this is Lon Sybin and thank you for watching.